All right, I found a code, day eight. What do we got? Uh, it's fast or short. Okay, we have maps, A to Z, and Steps, T modlin steps. Pause. Something like this. is a number. Uh, slow, slow, slow. Ghosts. Ends with A. to not reinforce this, maybe. So the answer in that case is six. Just needs to be 
But there's multiple, right? Like it should be the LCM, but it's a little bit hard to know which thing we need to end up on. Slow. Uh, just let that run. And I happening here. This is like uh, Chinese zoom into theorem stuff, right? Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Not co prime. What 
does this imply? Uh, is it just the product of these things? Plus one or something? too big. not a generic solution. Ugh, disaster. Okay. Um, does this make sense? In that case, it's definitely the product. Uh, Okay, rough day. Um, very messy on my part. Okay, so what was going on here? Uh, so, you're given our input, which has a list of, like, I guess, which path to take, and then a bunch of rules, like if you're at this location and you go left, go here, go right, go here. So part one is, suppose you start at AAA, how many steps does it take to get to ZZZ? Uh, part two is suppose you start at like all. Well, okay, let's talk about part one first. So, uh, yeah. this is going to be the only difference. So we have a starting position, um, which in part two is a list, which is why I'm handling it this way. And let's see. If len t equals len pause, then we can be done. Uh, print lcm of t dot values and break. Or really just like return, right? 
Uh, sure. Let's see what we get. So this gives, this is off by one. And this is off by a bunch. I see. One five one one seven. And this is some long thing ending at 43. Okay, so that looks correct. So what exactly is going on here? This is making some assumptions actually, which I don't love. Um, but it does get the right answer, so I guess we're gonna go with it. Sorry, so I should explain myself. So, uh, I said that we have this input and we're gonna follow these rules for going left and right. In part one, we started AAA and the question is how long does it take to get to ZZZ? Um, so, I'm building up this thing, which I call Go, which you're going, so Go takes a direction, left or right, and then a location, and then we post the rules. Um, so each of these lines has sort of where you start, and where you go left, and where you go right. So if you're going left from here, you go to here. If you're going right from here, you go to here. So that's, you know, the data, that's the rule. Uh, and then, to solve, so in part one, we started with AAA. Uh, and we just step each position forward. In part two, we're gonna have a list of positions that we're at, so that's why everything's a list. We're gonna step forward. So read off the current character um, from the like, you know, list of steps right or left. And also, you know, our current position, this is our next position. Um, and if we got back to uh, a Z state, then we are done. So in part one, this is, should really be ZZZ, but I guess it turns out that the first Z state that AAA goes to is ZZZ. Yeah, probably all the A's have totally separate paths, actually. That would kind of make sense. Um, so if we get to a Z, then we are done. Oh, I see. I should really be incrementing t at the start here, and then I would not need to write t plus 1 here. Right? Super not right. Uh, wait, what? How can moving T make this big of a difference? I'm so confused. Uh, okay, sorry. Losing my train of thought. So if we get back, if we get to a Z state, then we can keep track of how long it took us to get to Z. Uh, if we've, this is really for part two, but if, you know, in part one, this is only length one. So if we've like gotten to Z, then just print out that time. Uh, this should probably not happen. Okay, fine, so that's part one. In part two, they say, okay, actually, you're gonna start at all of the A states, you're gonna go left and right simultaneously, and then you're gonna go to all of the Z states. Or how long does it take so that everything is on a Z state? Um, and so the point is, uh, things get to a Z state pretty quickly, but they're out of sync with each other. Um, so we need to do something fast to correct for that. Wait, I guess I can stop this guy. He's not going to finish. <laughs> uh, and so it's basically the same thing, right? So instead of having a single starting state, we have, it turns out, six starting states. 
Uh, and then we go through you know, the same thing, all the states increment. And if you are at uh, a Z, then you're done. And we record how long it takes you to get to that Z. Uh, and so this is just a contingent fact about the problem input. But uh, so like, is that we keep cycling around to the Z's. Uh, in the sort of more generic case, the like, so I guess it turns out that the input is nice, and every time after a Z, you go back to the A. Uh, there could have been an input where that's not true, and then the problem would have been harder. But in this case, it is true. Um, so we just always, you know, have a loop. Uh, each of these six, thing, the six things have a loop that goes to Z and then immediately back to A. Um, so if the loop is like, you know, say the loop is 10 steps long for the first one and nine steps long for the second one, uh, then it will take 90 steps to, so that they actually sync up, even though the individual loops are only nine and 10 steps. Um, and so that is the point of this, is that once we figure out how long each of the loops are, we can just return their least common multiple, um, which is just, uh, it's not just the product, right? Because if one of them is five and one of them is 10, you're actually done after 10. You don't need to go all the way to 50. Um, so that's what least common multiple is doing is it's taking out the common factors. Uh, so what is going on with moving the position of this thing? Oh, I see. If I increment t in the wrong spot, then this gets screwed up. OK, fair enough. Uh, and why is it that it it's not like the LCM minus one? So what's going on with the example? example doesn't have a part one. One. So after one step, this guy is at C. Sure. I mean, what is actually happening here? I see. I guess my counting is just wrong. Fine. After two steps, he's at Z. Oh, it doesn't go back to A. It goes back to B. I see. OK, so they're being like as nice as possible. Uh, that makes sense. So it takes you like N steps to get to Z, and then it takes you N more steps to get to Z. You never actually go back to A, but you go back to the thing after A, so that it's like the math is as simple as possible. Um, in general, if that wasn't true, they could be like out of phase with each other, uh, as well as the multiples not being the same length, and you need to use the Chinese remainder theorem to solve this problem. Um, but this was like the nicest possible version of it. Uh, right, like we need to solve uh, P mod. Right, we need all the times to be some multiple of the cycle length. Uh, in general, we could have solve t mod ai equals bi. Uh, we can do this with the Chinese remainder theorem, which is the thing I was Googling. But as I said, the, in this case, the numbers were nice and it was not required. Uh, OK. Well, that was quite a bit of rambling. 
Um, hopefully that kind of makes sense. It's a more mathy problem today, and yeah, definitely not my best day. But we got some points, so that's good. See you tomorrow.